Okay, we're back. We're live for the 10 o'clock show. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is Community Matters. And uh, we're talking with uh, Richard Ha, who's a, an old friend of ThinkTech going back to 1925 or so. Um, okay. <laughs> and he's with uh, uh, Sustainable Hawaii Energy. Am I get that right? Um, which is uh, going to be the subject of our show. Uh, and we're talking to Dane Silva. He's a a doctor of chiropractor and a community health leader uh, on the Big Island. So the, the subject of the day is air purifiers. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I went down to my doctor. I'm always, uh, I always have a certain amount of trepidation uh, leaving and going into a, you know, an inside space somewhere. And I noticed that he had these air purifiers all around. And um, I, I began to think, well, this is, this is not his usual arrangement. Um, this is for COVID. And he wants to keep the air as clean as he can. Then I thought, well, you know, it's transmitted by uh, aerosol. Even Trump knows that, I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and aerosol can be, uh, you know, can transmit uh, virus particles across the room easily and they can hang there in the air. So one of the ways you can deal with COVID is to clean the air, clean the air of virus particles. And Richard has done some research and he's written a very interesting article for uh, on August 23rd um, called uh, Consider Air Purifiers to Stay Healthy. So Richard, what may, you know, you're so creative. Every time I look, you come up with something <laughs> so creative and so, and so mm, high tech. So can we talk about air purifiers today? Yeah, and, and the way you describe it, uh, actually it's common sense. It's not much, uh, detail science <laughs> okay <clears throat> we like common sense <laughs> yeah so what, what are you doing with air purifiers uh, how did how did this come to you um and uh, what are you doing with air purifiers these days richard well there were two things that popped up recently the first thing was um there was an article in in the atlantic a magazine and it talked about uh the various different uh, ways it looks like the, the virus is, is, is uh, transmitted. And it, it made a lot of sense to me, you know, that uh, it, it was uh, spread by, by air. You know, we, just, just watching everything, you, you kind of come to the conclusion that mainly it's spread through air. And that was one thing. The other thing was hanging in the background is that 40% or more of the people that are transmitting are actually don't have any symptoms or they, they're just ready to start, you know, getting symptoms. So, so you really don't know where they are in a, in a room. So putting those two things together, it came about to, well, what can we do about it? And the main issue is that you can't see the virus. See, if you, if you could see the virus, then let's say it was red whenever it comes out of anybody's mouth. If you could see the virus, it'd be easy. You just duck or take a few steps back and watch it go by, but you can't see it. And that's the issue. And if that's the issue, then what can we do um, to, 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 to deal with that? And especially in classrooms, yeah? When, when you start to think about what, where would you start first? Classrooms is, 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 is an important place to start because it's uh, the kids and the teachers are our are, are future. So if we start there and, and deal with classrooms, we have a, a, a foundation to build on. So basically that's how it came about. Well, I think it's, um, it, it's, the, it's the, you know, it's the, it's the successor to this whole notion um, about, um, about filtering the air and also about using ultraviolet. Uh, even Trump talked about that at one time. I think he abandoned the notion, but, but I think ultraviolet is used in hospitals they move these robots around, move them into a room, no people involved, uh, and they scan the room with ultraviolet overnight. Um, and that has traditionally, before COVID and everything, that has killed virus and, um, and other antigens uh, in that room just by scanning it with uh, ultraviolet light. So if you add ultraviolet or some other method of actually killing the virus into the purifier, then you really got something going. I mean, if you're trying to get public confidence in a given layer of protection, this is certainly worth considering, just as, as you said in your article. 
But let's talk, if you don't mind, let's talk a little science, a little science, Richard. So you said in your article um, that the filters we have, the purifiers we have, will, um, will screen out uh, micron, um, sorry, particles of mm, as small as 0.3 microns. Um, what is that? What's a micron? Dane. A micron is one Dane. millionth of a meter. Uh, my wife million. and I speak of little else at the dinner table. Uh, <laughs> you, you've studied uh, uh, bioscience and all. Uh, tell us about a micron and tell us about a nanometer. What is, what is all this and, and what do you, and how can you, how mechanically can you screen out uh, something like a virus particle? You know, virus particles are invisible. I remember doing research up at the University of Hawaii at Hilo where I collected some uh, samples of water from the, from the garden and processed them and stuck them in a microscope, the electron microscope, and I could actually see the viruses or virions, as we call them, um, on the screen of the microscope. Um, the fact that they're extremely small is, is basically what everybody wants to know. They don't really understand what is a meter. Okay, this is uh, America. We don't use meters, we use feet. So therein lies a problem where we're unable to communicate to each other about sizes. Um, when we talk about we're supposed to be six feet distance from each other, you know, it's approximately two meters. All right. Now, one millionth of a meter, that's one micron. One thousand millionth of a meter, that's a, a nanometer. When we talk about things like in nature, when we talk about light, wavelengths of light, we talk about nanometers. It's extremely small. So how can anything capture a tiny little object, an invisible virion in the air around us? Well, a couple of ways uh, you can accomplish that. First of all, understand that these virions are not floating around by themselves. They're in a uh, envelope of uh, fat and water and they're floating around. They came out of somebody's face and their mouth and their nose. You know what happens when you have stuff in there. It comes out coated with mucus and it has a liquid envelope. So the virions are not- Yeah, I, I, not to interrupt, themselves. but I, I remember that um, one of the ways that you kill a, uh, a COVID viral particle is you destroy the lipid oil coating it has. Correct. If you can destroy that, you destroy the particle. So it's this, it's this oil that makes it actually bigger than its, than its essential size, yeah? Correct. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. It's important to learn a little bit about um, what we call virology, how the virus uh, replicates, and then we can understand how we can um, get rid of it, uh, block it, terminate it. Uh, the air purifier is one way. Um, one, one of the air purifier methods is to uh, create a um, stream of ions in the air and the ions attach to the virions and then bring them down to the, to the fan and the filter of the uh, air filter and removes it. Um, one of the things you have to be considered about it when you're working in an industrial space is that the filters will need to be changed and those filters tend to be expensive. But if you're working in a home or in a car or in an office, it's very inexpensive to go out and find and shop for different types of purifiers. Um, I know you mentioned ultraviolet at, at some point. In, in many places, uh, ultraviolet is used in entry and exit points to bathe people in ultraviolet. And then when they're working at a desk or at a lab station, workstation, there are ultraviolet lamps placed near there as well as purifiers. Uh, when you're working with virions and other things like um, fungi and bacteria, you need to be extremely careful about what you touch and how you breathe it and what types of masks and protective equipment you use. You need gloves. You need masks. You need shields. These are all to protect you. Yeah. Well, as, as Richard said in his article, uh, you have to have multiple layers of protection because no one layer can do all of it. But if you put layer upon layer, uh, you know, your, your chances of being protected are that, that much better. So Richard, I mean, if you do this, if you put um, a purifier, say in your, your bedroom or your office or anywhere in your house, uh, where do you put it? You put it on a counter, put it on the floor. The ones in my doctor's office are on the floor, by the way. 
uh, and they're about two feet high, about a foot wide, foot deep. Um, they're very quiet um, and they work it all the time. But where do I put it if I get it in my house? Yeah, it depends. You know, if your house has air conditioning, <clears throat> then you got to look at where the, the air is flowing. Um, it comes out of the top, goes into the room, then comes back to the bottom. It, so in other words, it's continuously circulating. Now, if you are uh, thinking about what happens if there's an asymptomatic person in the room, then it's, it's a good idea to, to understand how the air flows and, and set your air purifier in the, wind, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the air movement. And to give you an example, let, let's compare that to uh, a, a room, maybe a classroom that does not have air conditioning they have to then rely on the, the outside air. So let's say the, the windows are all open, the, the air is coming through and goes out through the door. Now, if you have an asymptomatic uh, student right where the air comes in, then the next person in front and the next person in front is in the air street. So the objective is to put your Air purifier did, did center in the room if you have one. You know, what that does okay. is it, it, it uh, purifies the air because, you know, like uh, most of the ones that they recommend, the, the, the portable air purifiers, they say like um, every 10 minutes, they would like to see the air exchange. So every 10 minutes, um, that's, that, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, a good amount of air, air exchange. So I, dead center in the room is, is it, it, of the airflow is, is where I would say. Yeah, then of course the same question for, exists for air conditioners and how, how big a unit do you want? And I suppose that's a function of how big the room is as well as airflow. Um, so if I, if I go and buy one, um, you know, how do I determine the, uh, well, with air conditioners, it would be BTU or something, but what about the size of the of the air purifier, how do I know what's the right size? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> there are third party uh, people that analyze these uh, air purifiers. So what we did was we we worked with Kyoka Elementary School to get the whole school uh, air purifiers, and the one they chose was uh, uh, would handle uh, a, a room the size of five hundred square feet assuming eight foot ceiling. And uh, they made all these, their decisions based on that. And, and when you look at the, uh, the instructions, it'll tell you how, how fast it rotates the air through the room and, and stuff like that. And, and you know, basically for 500 square feet, it only cost them $250. And, and it's a freight freight to Hawaii. Well, oh, wow. And, and what was the source of that? Was that what what manufacturer? What uh, what shipper? Amazon was Amazon involved. Yeah, it was it was through Amazon. Yeah, uh, yeah. and and there's several different places where you can go to get instructions. Yeah, uh, as as to what to choose. And because I'm not a, a scientist, I, I don't want to be the one to recommend a specific brand. Uh, because uh, you know I'm a banana farmer. Yeah, so <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Uh, Rich Ha is a farmer in, in his heart <laughs> and to a large extent in his business. So, okay, well, so uh, I just wonder what kind of studying I have to do. Let's assume that I'm, you know, um, I'm Joe Doe and Joe Doe, Joe, whatever it is. And, and I, want to, uh, I want to do this. I like this idea. So I go to Amazon, but then I'll probably see 50 of them there. Uh, how do I know the good ones? Uh, I look for the ratings. Uh, um, how do I find one that would work best? Where, where can I research this, Richard? If you go to Consumer Reports and, and you ask for uh, something that's recommended for uh, uh, coronavirus, they'll, they'll give you uh, how they rate it. And then you look at the specifications and you decide. Oh, good. Okay, that's a good way in. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, Dane, you had, you had a, a series of chiropractic offices on the Big Island, um, and you put the, these purifiers in each one of them. How did yeah. you select the purifiers you used? How did you determine the sizes, and how did you determine the placement? 
Well, Jay, I started accumulating and testing these air purifiers in the mid 90s. That was uh, quite a while ago. And we're still using the same air purifiers. Um, I'm not promoting any specific brand, but the one that I found at that time was called Alpine. And uh, today they call it the classic, which means it's a real old model. And it still works very well. I, I've tested a few of them, some, and, and they were not $250 25 years ago. Okay, they were much more expensive, but they're worth it because they clean the air. Uh, you know, today we're talking about um, coronavirus. We have had a lot of viruses coming into our environment over the past 25 years. Okay, so we have, some of us have been addressing that issue all this time. And uh, the air, cleaning the air is one of the main issues. Cleaning the water is another one. Cleaning the environment is another one. Okay, SARS, SARS I remember SARS virus. I was coming oh, out sure. of Japan and I got screened for that. You know, so we have been dealing with these things for a long time. And so we here, will continue to deal with them <laughs> for a long yeah, time. Yeah. You know, COVID is not the last one. You know. yeah. No. Um, you, you mentioned ultraviolet a moment ago. Yeah. I'd like to show you an ultraviolet wand. Okay. Can you see this? Yeah. This is an ultraviolet wand. You use it to uh, illuminate areas that you're working in to uh, decontaminate those areas. You can use it in your car in your kitchen, you know, and then there's ways of getting disinfectant all over, you know, you can spray it all over the place. We use a little nebulizer. So how to deliver, you know, the, the punch to the virus or the virions is really important. Air filters, essential. You asked uh, the question earlier, you know, do you put it on your desk? If you have a small one, you can put it in your car. So now, um... The ultraviolet wand you just showed us, um, is that dangerous in any way? Because I remember that it, you could have um, a negative effect on, I think, your skin if you had prolonged uh, exposure to ultraviolet. Sure. Uh, and well, in the hospitals, on the... They don't, in the hospitals, when they move these robots um, into the hospital rooms, uh, they, they don't want anybody in that room because they don't want that <laughs> negative effect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you don't want to be bathing underneath the ultraviolet light. However, you can use it to uh, uh, illuminate surfaces and decontaminate the surfaces. Um, if you're working in a, um, you know, biosafety lab where testing is done for virions and, and bacteria, um, you'll see that there are points where there's ultraviolet lights at the entrance and exits to make sure that when you're passing through wearing your PPE, you're going to be bathed in the light. The key yeah. is not to have the light touch your skin. Yeah. Well, uh, Richard, what about? Uh, I think I saw this in your article. What about including the light in uh, the purifier? In other words, I, I can't think of a good reason why not to do that. And when, whatever air is being purified, you can run it in front of an ultraviolet light inside the machine. Is that being done? Yeah, the, the, it's being done, but some of the uh, 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 the measurements is not very clear at this point. So, so although I got that kind for my own self for my house and stuff, uh, because it's not uh, uh, very clear, I'm not recommending it for anybody else to use. It's a they have to decide that on their own. But if some some scientists can figure that out, uh, I, I defer to that. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you mentioned that I, I want to explore a little bit is, uh, you know, we had this initiative and I, and I hesitate to think uh, how far it got, it may not have gotten very far, uh, where the governor said he was going to put air conditioning in every classroom, permanent and temporary around the state uh, for the comfort of the, of the uh, students inside. That, that was before COVID. Um, but I wonder in the case of a, a room, a classroom, for example, um, can you get along without the air conditioning and, and just a, and just a purifier? Should you use both? Um, is an air conditioner a way to substitute for the purifier? I mean, how do they interrelate? Well, the air conditioner just works all day long and it, the air rotates through the room. Um, It doesn't clean up the air after it comes out of the air conditioner. So it goes into the room, 
as clean as it can get coming out of the air conditioner. But if there's anybody sitting in the room that's uh, uh, asymptomatic, it just adds more virus particles to the air. Possible, possibly. If you put a, a, a uh, uh, air purifier, portable air purifier in the room, what you're doing is you're lowering the amount of a virus that's floating floating around in the air, and and I, I guess I nobody knows exactly how much before you you catch the disease, but there's a point where it gets so low that you actually don't catch it. So me, what you know, and we don't know the answer to that at this point. But what happens if the air purifier actually lowers it to to the point where it doesn't spread? Then essentially, what uh, an asymptomatic person could be sitting there and possibly not spreading it around to the other people. We don't know that, but yeah. why not be safe rather than sorry, yeah? Oh yeah, why not take every, every layer of protection you can get? Well, there's two things um, you know, that you referred to that I think are worth exploring. Number one is uh, how, how much virus um, would have to you get into your system before you got sick? And, and my, my reading early on uh, with regard to COVID was that uh, even a very small amount would be enough to make you sick. Later on, it appeared that no, no, as you said, Richard, it's a critical mass thing. It may differ depending on your immune system, your, your strength, you know, whether you've been compromised in some way. Um, but it's more than a tiny, tiny thing. It's more than one virion, for example. It's gotta be a certain critical mass of this. Um, the, other, the other thing is, um, how long does the, does the viral particle last before it dies of its own? And dies, I, again, I think I, I referred to the deterioration of the lipid shell around it. And by the way, the lip, when, you, when you wash your hands with soap, uh, the bubbles and the chemical action of the soap is what destroys that, destroys that lipid uh, shell and thus kills the virus. So uh, I've seen various uh, estimates about how long it lasts in a given room. Suppose I don't have air conditioning. Suppose I don't have a purifier. Suppose I have people coming and going and some of them are infected um, and it, the aerosol is generating a layer of particles at some, at some height you know, in that room. Um, aside from surfaces where people touch, aside from that, just the air, how long, do you have an idea from this stain? How long does, does that particle last before it just gets old and dies? When, when you're in a situation where you have an office, for example, you can turn on your filter long before anyone walks into it other than yourself. That is the proper uh, protocol. You're going to first scrub the air uh, before anybody visits you. Why not leave it on all the time? You could do that, but if you're, um, you know, concerning, uh, if you're considering energy use or just wasted energy, there's nobody going to be in that room and there's nothing in that room. There is no need to keep the, uh, you know, the uh, things in operation all the time. So normally when we go in, the first thing we do is turn on the filters. And if you're going to have patients coming in, let's say at nine o'clock, you can start turning on the filters at seven or eight o'clock and it'll certainly do the deed. Um, once you start using the filter, you will notice a difference. If you're using an ultraviolet filter, you can actually tell there's a smell, a different odor in the air. So it's really proof is in, uh, you know, trying it out and using it. And maybe the, the best thing is to have somebody do a display or a demonstration, and then you go in and you check it out in their room, and then you can see for yourself how effective it is. Mm -hmm. um, let's say, for example, you have somebody walking in with a perfume. How soon will you be able to get rid of that smell of the perfume by using your air filter? That's one way of testing. Yeah, so, but, but without a filter, uh, I don't know, maybe there's not enough science on this, but uh, without a filter, how long, how long will the virus particles last hanging in the air? Is, is it a day? Is it two days? Is it a matter I, of I don't hours? have the data on that. I don't have the information on that. Um, it will depend also on things like the temperature, humidity mm. of the room, of mm. the air. Mm. Some virions can live in water. <laughs> That's encouraging. We still, we, you know, we still don't know enough about this, honestly, and we're finding out maybe I could say the hard way. But let's, let's uh, go back to the point in your article, Richard. You talk about layers. 
And certainly it seems to me, I'm, I'm convinced, personally convinced that air purifiers are one significant layer. They gotta be deployed properly. Deployed. And you gotta, you know, you gotta make some analysis and read up a little, but it seems to me they're an important layer. But what are the other layers? The other layers don't go away. <clears throat> you know, for example, starting at the very beginning, you still have to wash your hands. You still have to wash surfaces that wash surfaces that you know uh, have been touched. What else? What are all the layers you can think of to get the you know the the best protection you can get? Social distancing, making sure that you don't have a whole lot of people squeezed into a small space, and that yeah. that's essentially what what everybody looks at right now, and and. Adding an air purifier is just one more layer added to that other layers of safety. Yeah. Uh, on social distancing, what's, you know, I, everybody says six feet and I think, you know, that's sort of the, the common understanding, but I've seen articles that, that say that six feet, given the aerosol spread that we are talking about, absent an air purifier, um, the social distancing would actually call for more than six feet. And I've seen numbers as high as 16 feet. Yep. Uh, have you seen anything like that? I, I hear the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and they talk about, um, you know, if you imagine cigarettes, somebody smoking a cigarette and, uh, you're sitting across of that person for 15 minutes, yeah. that's the, that's what they're talking about. And that's a general, uh, uh, so in other words, you don't catch it just immediately. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, you can't see it is the problem. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you, Dane, we only have a few minutes left here. Uh, you know, this could be more than just uh, your home and more than just schools, which we care about a lot. Um, let's take, for example, a small business. Let's take a bar or a restaurant. Okay. And, um, you know, we, we really watch the, the products. Uh, Richard examines, you know, what, what, which of these purifiers is doing what, how good they are in terms of acting as a layer of protection. Um, and then we settle on one, call it the XYZ purifier. And it's got a lot of range, it's got a lot of power, it's, it's, it's got, uh, you know, maybe it would filter out particles of the 0.3 microns or less even, catch every single virion. Um, and we put, say, hypothetically, we put in ultraviolet systems uh, in, this, in this machine. It doesn't matter how big or small. It doesn't, frankly, it doesn't matter how much energy it uses, although that's sort of always, <laughs> always of interest. <laughs> but, and, then we, and, we, and then we try this out in a restaurant, like, like a, almost like a phase three trial, like a vaccine trial. And we check everybody out and we, we try to make, you know, some kind of calculation of the data to see whether it is working and stopping all spread of virus in that restaurant. And let's assume that we can actually, you know, analyze that data and we can determine this box, this XYZ box actually does the job. And this data to prove that it does the job 99 point, say 99.3% of the time. What effect does that have, the discovery of this system? What does that have on the future of our economy? Think about it. That, that's really huge because, you know, businesses, restaurants and stuff like that, I would have a huge sign out front saying I have filters if I ran a business like that. Yeah. So because the people that are going to come inside, they're going to come inside if they feel safe. They're not going to say anything. They're just going to look around. Hmm, I feel safe here. I'll go there. So the more we can do and help the businesses like that, the more we can get back to normal. So it's really important that we take care of the inside air we share. And, and then just, just, just uh, be common sense about what works and what doesn't work and stuff like that. Yeah. So Dane, how much of what Richard says do you agree with? Well, I agree with everything that uh, Richard has said. And um, I think that uh, you have also opened our eyes to a lot of different questions that need to be answered. And we look forward to uh, helping everyone to discover those answers because it's important as we move forward to restore our social 
behaviors, social relationships, and visit those restaurants and bars that you've been talking about. <laughs> and don't forget barbershops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well done, Dane. Well articulated. And Richard, thank you so much. I think this is a great contribution to the community to have this conversation. And as you said in your, in your article, to consider the possibility. Thank you so much, Richard Hart. Thank you, gentlemen. Dane Silva, appreciate it. Aloha. Thank you. you guys. Aloha.